Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. Have you ever thought about these? They're so-called floating tables and they work on a principle called tensegrity. Now the idea of tensegrity has been around for absolutely ages. There is an argument that traditional kayaks and shoji from Japanese housing use this idea of tensegrity. But it really came to the forefront, I would suppose, in a 1920s Russian art movement that developed across the world and could be argued to have reached its peak with Kenneth Snelson in 1948 and his famous Needle Tower sculpture put up in 1960. And it was in the 60s that Buckminster Fuller coined the term tensegrity and it's been with us ever since. Finding applications in architecture, like in the 1988 Summer Olympics, it was used in the uh, roof of the main stadium, and in 2009 a bridge was put up in Australia called the Kurilpa Bridge, and then in 2014 NASA created something that they call their Super Ball Bot, which is... <laughs> interesting name and there's also an argument there exists something called biotensegrity where muscle and skeletal structures and cell membranes are held together by the same principles. Compression and tension. Compression is when you try to squeeze something together and of course things like tubes are brilliant if you try to squeeze them together which is why wood is so good because wood is basically lots of tubes all packed together. Tension is when you pull something apart it's really good on that is bits of string and wire. If you pull them, they're very strong because if we push them, they've got no compression at all. They just fold up. Tensegrity is the arrangement of things so they only have compression, where they're good at compression, and tension when they're good at tension. Because there's also another force, obviously. If I'm compressing something and I put a force in that direction, it's called shear. And of course, things that are good at compression aren't that good in shear. So for a floating table, we have a support structure attached to the table top. And that's hung with this cable from a bottom support structure. The table top and the top support structure tries to fall downward because of gravity. And that creates tension in this cable and prevents it from falling downward. Of course, the table top isn't very stable with this arrangement, which means more support cables with proper tension are needed in order to make it stable. So this cable at the back prevents the table top from tilting forwards. And in the same way, with the minimum of three, that is two more cables, it's possible to block all motions of the tabletop. The centre cable prevents it from dropping down, and we get a stable structure with the tabletop suspended in midair. Now to make one of these, you need a structure like this, and you basically print off two of those, and here they are. Now that one forms the bottom structure, and that one goes there with the two cups underneath each other, because these two discs are where you tie the bit of string. So this top bit falls down, and we get our string in tension. Add three more strings around it, and hey presto, you've got your floating table. And of course you can make these in any shape you like, as long as you've got these two points one above the other. You don't only need to use a little bit of string, you can achieve the same effect with magnets. So in that little recess I've put one of these magnets and it's uh, four millimeters by 15 millimeters north-south on the top and bottom face and I've also attached some very fine copper wires to the three slots. And that one I've done exactly the same but these magnets are actually attractive so they hold that way. What we need to do is stick something in between those that will stop them going all the way together. So I've got a couple of washers and a plastic spacer. We put those together and that will give us the height. Now if it won't quite stick like this one won't because the magnets aren't strong enough, well add some extra magnets so that you get it to stick. When it's holding together, then we can take these copper wires and line them up with the three slots we've got in the top section and fasten them down. Okay, if you're thinking about doing this, I can tell you doing it with the magnet is a huge fiddle on, but when you get it to work, I mean, it's really worth it because it does look like it's floating there, which is pretty cool. Now then, why do I say this is a generator? Well, it's being investigated as the possibility of being a generator. The way tensegrity structures are being used actually boggles the mind from the very structure itself because it's 
self-erecting it can collapse down into nothing and the structure is incredibly robust and adaptive to changing conditions and so it's finding its use in things like wind turbines equally in wave machines where you can put the structure in the sea and use the structure itself it's also being used in adaptive solar cells on the sides of buildings and when you think about the integrity structure then you can look at the very elements of it that is the rods or the ropes to turn those into energy scavengers where the stretching can be used to harvest tribal electricity or to use a linear generator so it's again mind-boggling it's far greater than a floating coffee table as an amusing parlor trick to something that really is quite interesting and quite astounding so i thought i would share it with you i hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching